Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is a quick update or somewhat of an analysis of the situation at the Kayamske sector. This is Kayamske and uh, at the Zaporizhia front. This is the most uh, western part of the Zaporizhia front. Uh, this area here, this is the uh, Dnieper River. Uh, going over there is the uh, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. So the Ukrainian forces uh, has been uh, very busy uh, trying to retain retain control uh, over at Petikaki. They have been consi consistently trying to send in forces over the Petikaki to try to secure the town, despite that this village or settlement has already been catch captured by them, and the Russians have not want to take over it. The, the Russian forces continue to just hold a line around here and they do not want to enter Petikaki. The Ukrainian forces consistently keep trying to go in, but uh, they are just getting uh, taken out by uh, Russian forces as they come in. So the Ukrainian forces have not yet you know, entirely able to control Piatikaki. Uh, so the interesting thing is that the Ukrainian forces have a different force that is focusing on a different thing, which is Zaribyanki. So the Ukrainian forces have, are also attacking uh, in a different uh, different force attacking uh, Zaribyanki. However, this is proven to be really difficult if the Russian forces have a powerful uh, fortified position on the northern part of Zaribyanki. And the Ukrainians seems to be reluctant to you know, attack any other sector in this front line. Perhaps they could have uh, went on uh, you know, attack south of Kayamske which they did not try to do because the Russian forces have massive entrenchments around the south of Kayamske and somehow the Ukrainians just did not want to go there uh yeah which then will be a it, which will be interesting if you ask me because they will have to eventually capture them as well so the Ukrainian forces also did try something different they did try to attack on the eastern part of uh, Piatikaki. They actually tried to attack in this area here, but uh, they got uh, stopped by the Russian forces as well. And since then, after all these things that had happened, the U Russian forces have actually tried to launch diversionary attacks. There is some kind of, there's some reporting from the Russian Defense Ministry that suggests that the Russians might be attacking towards uh, Mali Shabaki, uh, with, which the Ukrainians are currently holding and Shabaki. Uh, on the, the 16th of July, report from the Russian Defense Ministry suggests that the Russians are attacking Mali Shabaki. And then on the 17th of July, which is the, the latest Russian Defense Ministry's report, suggests that they are attacking uh, Shabaki. Uh, so this is uh, very interesting. There is The Russian Defense Ministry also uh, reported that the Ukrainians actually counterattacked over at Mali Shabaki, which means that the entire front line around here uh, in the Shabaki and Mali Shabaki region has started to flare up uh, the, over here. So previously the fighting is largely in this, in this area here in the Petikaki region. Now uh, the fighting has basically spread over to this side uh, as probably the Ukrainians are trying to find a new way to get in or maybe they got just uh, triggered by this uh, Russian uh, diversionary attack or probing attacks that is a uh, you no know, happening over at this area here this regardless what it is uh the this kayamske sector is just a really difficult place for the ukrainians there are severe russian uh, fortifications around here uh in the just off shabaki and mali shabaki there's another just on the eastern part of uh, or southeastern part of uh petikaki there's another major trench line over at Konovalova and these are just the very front of this uh, front line. The, there is more in the rear uh, over at uh, let me let me let me change the color uh, over at this uh, Dolinka. So the Russian forces have a major entrenchment over at Dolinka. There's two separate ones, one over in the in this area here. There's another one over in this area here. Basically, it's like the a second line of defense for the Konovalova uh, trench line. So this is just very formidable. The interesting thing is that we do not have uh, much entrenchment around uh, this area here, which is probably why the Ukrainians are trying to penetrate 
and capture uh capture Zeribianki so that they can actually push through in this area here into uh Horove and uh, maybe on the east uh east western part of uh, Dolinka and maybe from here they can actually you know try to go somewhere else uh however if you look at the bigger map uh i don't know this just feels like a trap uh you just feel like uh, you know a place to allow the ukrainians to go in and then they can be uh, wiped out by the russian forces so the there in the latest information we also have uh, from pro-russian sources suggesting that the ukrainians have sent reinforcement over to shibaki uh so uh over here they are sending reinforcement to this area here so we probably maybe this is a reaction to you know the flaring up of the fighting over at this region here at mali shabaki and shabaki which is uh which is why we are seeing the reinforcement coming to this place previously reinforcement had always been coming through kayamske uh of uh stepno here the ukrainian forces have always been traveling in this way over to the front line over at the petikaki region so uh this time around we have reinforcement coming to shabaki which means that uh the the, the entire a vector of the of the attacks or assault or the defensive operations have changed anyway this is the quick update and analysis over at the camp sector and i'll see you in the next update